Hello everybody, my name is David. Thank you for joining me today for my question and answer video that I do every single Monday. This is part two. If you guys missed part one, please go back and watch it. There's lots of questions and answers on there and things I recommend. Uh, all I ask you guys, please, ask me a question, leave your location. Tell me where you guys are, please. You can be general. Don't have to be specific. Thank you. So let's get started with the questions. First question on part two is from APG95. Interesting name. In Philadelphia. I heard from the guy who dated my ex right after me that she did not abuse him at all. He said that while they dated, which was longer than her and I, she was a great girl and they parted ways amicably. I am confused because I thought narcissists cannot change. So much going on here. So much going on here. First of all, let's say she's a narcissist, right? I don't know. I'm going by what you tell me. Let's say she has a personality disorder, okay? Which most likely probably does, you know, if you're confident and that's why you're here, you know? This is so much different that, you know, people don't come find my channel and find this stuff just because their boyfriend cheated on them one time and they're not a narcissist. This is, you know, they've gone through it all, their textbook, right? Let's say she's a narcissist, okay? Let's say she abused you, okay? If he said she was a great girl and they parted ways amicably and they dated longer than you and her, I call BS. I call I call bullshit, okay? And 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 there's so many different things going on here. It's I, I, so many of us didn't know we were being abused. So a lot of this stuff is normal from our childhood. Or we didn't, we weren't aware of it. We ignore our, our our emotions. We ignore them. We don't like anxiety and depression. We we hate bad feelings, so we try to suppress them. So when someone makes us feel bad, we try to ignore it. There's so many things going on here. You don't know this guy. You don't know what's true or not. It's his perception is skewed. He may have been abused and not realize it. He may have so much shame he doesn't want to admit she abused him. If he, had, it, I'm telling you guys, okay, I'm not taught. Healthy people don't date narcissists. And, and maybe for a week, maybe a date or two, but eventually you can't fool healthy people. You can't pretend to be healthy forever. You, you just can't. Sick narcissists can't pretend to be totally healthy. They can, they can trick unhealthy people, but they're not going to fool healthy people. I call BS. Or... He doesn't realize he was abused. He's so ashamed he doesn't want to admit it. Maybe she was on her best behavior because she knows why the last relationship she was in didn't work. And she, she realizes, I can't cheat on him this time. I can't lie to him this time. And maybe she was really good for a while. Maybe he didn't know she abused him. Not even just that he doesn't realize that this is abuse. Maybe he didn't know she cheated on him. Right? I mean, there's just so much here. Don't go by just what you see. Don't go by what you just hear, what someone tells you. Uh-uh. You don't know this person. You weren't there. Just like when someone says, someone abused me, someone did this to me. We don't know. We say, I'm sorry, but we don't go prosecute the person they're pointing fingers at. And it's the same goes with this guy who says, I wasn't abused. You know how many people don't realize they're abused and they come tell me? They'll say, they'll tell the big, big things and I'll say, well, what about these little things too? And that's abuse too. They're like, really? I didn't know that. I watched my dad do that to my mom my whole childhood. Yeah, it's abuse. It's abuse. It's wrong. So much going on here. You, you, you can't take this. And, and also don't compare. You shouldn't be watching this stuff. You shouldn't be comparing yourself. Stuff like this is horrible, toxic, ugly behavior. Don't do it. Don't get caught up in this crap. You need to be confident what you experience. Whatever this person does somewhere else, some other time to somebody else has nothing to do with what they, they did to you. It says nothing about your experience. What somebody goes and does afterwards does not change this experience. Do you understand that? Just like if they apologize up and down. That's great. Still happened. If they go and, and get totally cured still happened. They never do it again. Still happened. The other thing I like to ask, and I like people to ask when people say, 
I was with somebody who was so toxic. Let's go down the list, right, of narcissists. My ex had no empathy. My ex was totally self-importance. My ex was totally entitled. My ex was completely selfish in our relationship. Cheated, lied, never told me anything they're doing. My, my, my ex was suspicious of everybody. Paranoid. They constantly needed attention. They were arrogant, judgmental, and had total bad attitude. They thought they're so amazing, nobody understood them in the world. They were preoccupied totally with fantasies of being famous all the time. And then you broke up and they dated somebody else a week later, a month later, and it looks like they're all good. On Facebook, they said that everything's great. It's bullshit. And even if it's true, my, all I would ask is, you think this person's healthy now, why? What happened? Just a bad relationship? Just a breakup? No. You don't, you, we can't cure personality disorders like that because they just decide to not have one anymore. I don't want to be, I don't want to have a personality disorder anymore. That sucks. So I'm just not going to have one now and I'm going to enter a new relationship. We don't do this. We don't have bad relationship, bad relationship, bad relationship, and then a great one just for no reason because you picked Mr. or Mrs. Right. No. If you're Mr. or Mrs. Wrong, you aren't going to be with Mr. or Mrs. Right. That this, this is completely doubting yourself. This is allowing other people to determine what your experience was. And they can't. They don't know. Only you do. Don't let this, don't let other people change that for you. I, I understand. I understand the confusion there. Like, whoa, this is weird. But I'm telling you, too much stuff going on. Thanks. Walkie in Florida. I'm guessing because you like to walk. You call walkie. Good thing you don't like to run. You'd be running. My ex-husband is addicted to pornography. I've been told by my therapist that my ex has fear of intimacy. My gut is telling me that he withheld sex from me to punish me. What is your opinion about that? Well... I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know your, your ex-husband. I don't know you. I don't know anything about your relationship except just this, which isn't much. If you, I, I'll tell you, your feelings aren't wrong. I'm not saying that what you, what you feel he does, he's doing. It's just that you, you have those feelings. You feel like he was punishing you. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's a horrible feeling. You shouldn't have ever accepted it. I'm glad that he's your ex-husband now. Good for you. Your therapist said he has a fear of intimacy. He may. H how would I know? I wouldn't know if it, it, what, what's going on. I can tell you that most narcissists are very avoidant people. They seek attachment just like all of us. We want attachment. We want it, want it, want it. And as soon as we start attaching, they start pushing you away. I'm guessing this is the same guy who doesn't like to talk about emotions, who doesn't want to be close to you, who doesn't like to make love. He likes to have sex. He doesn't care about who you are inside. He doesn't know who he is inside. He doesn't care about how you feel. And he never really is sure about how he feels. Everything is external to him. I don't know where I am here. I feel like my video just paused. Nope, still going. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So he doesn't feel like, you know, it's not important. There's two different kinds of people. I say this a lot. And there's, there's people that care only about external world. And then there's people that, that place importance on the internal, on who people are and how they feel and what they want and things like this. Not what people are on the outside. This person is different than you. And it's okay to be different but we need, you, you, you can't, you can't, you, you, you've, that, that's the one, the one thing that can't be different. If we're going to marry somebody, we have to care about the similar things like that. There's got to be similarities as far as I care about how people feel and so does my partner. You know what I mean? It sounds like your partner who cares about pornography lives in the external world. 
He cares about status or maybe money or maybe looks or maybe brands or maybe, you know, all that stuff, external. And you care about how you feel and, and who people are and who you are. And he doesn't even know who he is, I'm sure. So there's a big difference there and it won't work out. This will never work out. So he needs to be with somebody who doesn't care who people are, who places massive importance on sex, not love, on obsession, things like that. Yeah, I, I can't tell you too much more because you didn't really tell me a lot either. Tell me more. Ask more. Okay, thank you. Cheryl, don't know where you're from. Cheryl, please leave us your locations, people. Tell us where you're from. Be general. Anywhere in the world. Hemisphere, state, country, city. Cheryl asks, how do you heal when you're going through a major smear campaign and court on false charges? Been a year and I'm so drained. Therapy for a year. He's getting worse. I'm alone. He turned son against me. Positive things, Cheryl. Positive things, Cheryl. Positivity. Optimism. Smear campaign. Cheryl's a bad person. Cheryl's a loser. Cheryl's never going to get better. Cheryl's life sucks and always will. And then that little voice in your head says it too. Confirms it. Validates it. We need opposition. We need people over here saying, no, Cheryl's a good person. And it can't be just Cheryl inside. We need other people in our life. We need support. Cheryl, call on friends. It's amazing how my clients come see me and tell me they're going through the worst time in their life, but I don't even need to tell my friends. See, this is your best friend and they don't know what you're going through. Nope, I haven't told them. Wow. If my best friend held things like that from me, I'd feel horrible. Why won't you tell me? You know? Call on your friends. Call on people that say that they care about you and tell them it's time to show it, that you need it. Support, some of the best support is the support that we pay for. Because those are professionals who've been through it or know how to help you and it's all about you. And they don't care how they feel, it's not about them, it's just all about Cheryl and that's what we need sometimes, Cheryl, to be all about you. Because you've been through smear campaigns, sounds like narcissists, and if you've been with narcissists, it's never been about you. So how do you heal? It's gotta stop. To heal from pain, the pain has to stop, right? So obviously you can't control these people, but you can control yourself and you can control yourself looking at it and you can control yourself telling other people, don't show me, don't tell me, I don't wanna hear about it. I know it's happening, but I don't wanna hear about it, Cheryl. Cheryl, once you realize that we are the people who decide who we are, not everyone else, then you'll realize it doesn't bother you, okay? I'm so sorry for what you're going through. I, I know it's horrible. I don't know exactly how you feel or, or what you're going through, but I know smear campaigns are horrible. You said you're, go, you're in court on false charges. Get a good lawyer to prove that. That's for a lawyer to help you with. I can't help you with that. You said he's getting worse. You shouldn't know, know that unless it's things he's doing to you. And then we get a lawyer, we document all of it. We go file police reports, okay? You said you're alone. You're not alone, Cheryl. You have you. I heard the other day, if you're lonely, you're in bad company. If you're lonely and you're alone, I don't want to say you're in bad company, Cheryl, because you don't seem like a bad person. But we shouldn't feel so alone just because we're by ourselves. I, I understand. I empathize and I sympathize with you. I'm very sorry, Cheryl. Ask for support. Ask for what you need. Go get it. Hire it. What you have to do. Don't look at it. Don't let this be a part of your life anymore. You let sick people say sick things about other people. You let them do that. Okay? It doesn't have to affect you this much. I'm sorry. He said he turned your son against you. Horrible. Don't change who you are. Don't let this change who you are, Cheryl. You decide who you are and you keep living your life and showing that. This will get better, I promise. I promise. Good luck. Anita from Belgium. Hello, Anita. I never dreamed 
Okay, so Anita says, I never dreamed while dating the narcissist, not once, but now that you're out of it, you dream a lot. Sometimes horrible dreams about you as a kid. You asked your therapist, but she couldn't give you a real answer why. So I want to help you out a little bit why this happens. First of all, to dream, we, they say you almost always dream. We just usually don't remember our dreams. But most dreaming happens in REM sleep, deep sleep. And the problem with trauma is we don't go into deep sleep. That's why you guys wake up every two hours, every four hours. Hypervigilance. You were going through trauma in this relationship. Most likely you were having deep sleep and now your brain is starting to relax a little bit that you've been away from this. And now your, your brain is starting to allow you to, you know, you're getting in deep sleep and you're starting to dream, you're starting to remember them. Your brain doesn't care about being happy or sad or any of this stuff. Your brain cares about staying alive. You were in this relationship and when you changed, when you're out of this relationship and this person's gone, you have this huge void, your brain, that's when your brain freaks out. That's when your brain thinks you're going to die because you made all these big changes. It doesn't care about good or bad, happy or sad. It's different. It's this kept me alive. This relationship kept me alive for so many years. And now you're throwing it all away. You're going to change everything. No, don't do that. Change is bad. We could die. If I took a right, if I took a, a, a step with my right foot, my camera's turned around so it looked like this, my right foot. Don't take a left. Keep taking the right. That's our brains. It's just for survival. So there's a, a few different things that could be happening here, right? Also, you're, you're, you're like a drug addict, okay? You're in a bad relationship that was had ups and downs and that makes our hormones rise and fall. All these chemicals in our brains rise and fall, rise and fall. We get addicted to this. So it's not like a drug addict. You were addicted to this, most likely. I'm just, I'm guessing. If you're addicted to this up and down relationship, like even when it was over and even when you knew he was bad and you didn't want anything to do with him, but there was still, you wanted to contact him. You wanted him back again. You needed him. So it's, it's that addiction element to it. And when we get off the drugs, when we get off the alcohol, when we stop the things that we're dependent on or addicted to, our brain freaks out. We have massive nightmares. It's common. You can ask every single addict. When they start going through withdrawal and they get off the drugs and alcohol, they just have crazy vivid dreams. And they'll dream about the, how they used to use drugs. They'll dream about, they'll fantasize about the drug and alcohol. They'll dream about the people they used to use with. You said you're dreaming about uh, when you were a child. Because this, this should be, this experience was so big. It should make you start looking at your whole life. And a lot of us try to ignore it. A lot of us try to not look at ourselves, but this is a time that we do, right? This is a major time in your life, a major experience. Might have been the biggest, might have been the worst experience of your life. Start looking at your whole life. That's what your brain may be trying to get you to do. So there's several different reasons this could be happening, Anita, but I would say you didn't have, you, you weren't getting any deep sleep in this relationship and maybe even right after, but now you are. Now you're starting to remember your dreams. Maybe you're starting to dream more. Maybe your brain's allowing you to feel, you know, when we numb out, we take drugs and it numbs us. That relationship was numbing you. You had to ignore the bad times, which means we ignore the good times, meaning that we ignore our emotion. We don't like bad emotions, so we ignore the whole thing. We can't just separate and ignore just bad ones. We ignore the whole thing. Then when it's over, we will typically start allowing ourselves to feel. Our brain will start allowing ourselves to feel emotions again. When we get off drugs and alcohol, we have to start feeling these things. And that might be what's going on too. Several different things could be happening, Anita. I hope that helps you understand. If not, please keep asking more questions. Thank you. Lady Buttons. Uh, please leave us your location, guys. Tell us where you're from. Thank you very much. Lady Button says, David, please, I've got a question no one can or will answer. I don't understand how the new supply can be okay with them stalking an ex. So your ex is now dating somebody else and, and that ex is stalking you and you said the ex knows. How, do the ex, how does the ex allow that? 
Well, here we go again, right? You don't know everything. You can't. I understand you might know that, she, that she's aware, but may not really, I mean, this person may not be aware of what they're doing or they're aware of some of it and they're being lied to and, and said, this is why I'm doing this. I'm going and checking on my ex because I need to make sure that they're not doing this to my children or my stuff or I don't know. Okay. But here, let's go like this. Maybe one, they don't know. So you said, how do they allow them to stalk? Maybe they don't know they're stalking. Maybe they're being lied to. Maybe it's low self-worth, shame, that they know their ex is stalking you and they're, they're allowing it. Maybe they are because they feel so unworthy, right? Let's say it's the same reason you put up with their BS, right? Your ex lied to you, maybe cheated on you, maybe hit you, maybe spit at you, maybe who knows what they've done, but they mistreated you, right? And it didn't end right there. You didn't end it. You put up with it. You accepted it. You said, okay, you had to have, right? You have to understand that a little bit, that that was your self-worth. We date our own self-worth. Someone calls me up. First session, right? Client tells me how bad their ex is. My husband of 20 years was the worst person in the world. They're the worst, lowest scumbag on the planet. And all I think is, man, I'm sorry you feel that way about yourself, that you would be married to someone like that for 20 years. And they say, well, I didn't know. By year 18, you knew. You stayed together for two more years. Come on. Come on. You have to understand it. You put up with it too. And I'm not saying you, you, that they stalked their ex with you, but they did some stuff that you aren't a big proponent of. <laughs> I hope that you, you should have, you, sh you have to understand. You have to try. Instead of trying to find out differences with people, try to find similarities. Okay. This, this victim isn't that much different than you. Steve from Melbourne, Australia. Hello, Steve. If a borderline becomes really attached to you, then one day the relationship ends and she devalues you and says she never wants to speak to you again. Will she ever miss you and contact you again? You know, not all. I, I can't speak for things like that. And I couldn't even speak for one person. I don't know. I don't know what anyone will do. Let me say that or let me tell you that generally borderlines are emotionally unstable, meaning they have tons of emotions. They don't regulate, they don't process. So they've got anxiety from 20 years ago. They've got depression from 30 years ago. They've someone hurt them 18 years ago and it still hurts just as much. They've got happy, sad, glad, mad, rad, <laughs> uh, list them just a list of emotions and they don't process them they don't regulate them and they feel like this all the time and when you feel like this all the time you want it to stop and you want it to stop now and you'll almost take any extreme measures and you start thinking maybe it's because of this and maybe it's because of that and maybe it's because uh where i live and maybe it's my job and maybe it's my boyfriend maybe it's my friends maybe it's my family and i need to change it all right now and i'm going to end it and i'm going to pack my stuff up and tell my family there you go and i'm going to move to mexico and you know oh gosh all in one day and then a couple days later it all sinks in and i realize what the hell did i do uh-oh yeah Borderlines, they make mistakes just like all of us, but they make big ones and they make them over and over again and they regret what they do a lot. And they, to the point where they may not even acknowledge it. They may not even say sorry. They'll just act like it didn't happen, right? They'll miss you. They'll think you're the most horrible person in the world and then they'll think you're amazing and then they'll think you're horrible and you're amazing. And then they'll, you're horrible and they'll break up with you. And then the next boyfriend sucks and compares you to them. And now you're, you're amazing. Again, borderlines almost always Hoover.
and and I'll say they're I'll say they're going to. Will she miss you? Yes. Even if she doesn't, she'll come up in her mind that she does. She, something will happen. She'll be with a boyfriend that doesn't make her happy, and she'll say, uh, Steve used to make me happy. I remember Steve has made me happy before. Steve's amazing. Now Steve is amazing. And the boyfriend will go, what do you mean? Steve, you, you, always, you told me how bad Steve was to you. Oh, I just said that because I was angry. For two years, you said, I mean, it's impulsivity, Steve. And impulsivity shows and borderlines in the three major areas of life. Where you live, where you work, and who you're with. Borderlines will end relationships, quit their jobs, and move like that. And it feels more unstable. And then they'll try and get it all back. And then they'll just, they'll get you all back. They'll get you back, their job back, and they'll move back in. And they'll leave it all the next day again. They'll work, they'll do everything they can to get all this back. Work so hard and then just dump it all again. Just to, just to do it. I, it's, they're so unstable. Don't even bother asking them how they feel. They don't know. They I can't tell you. I hope that helps you understand a little bit, Steve. Please keep asking more questions, okay? But you want to know if she'll ever miss you. Contact you again. And I know you said you hope that she doesn't. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you're scared, say what you're scared of out loud because you don't need to be scared of her. Okay? Thank you. Last question is from Blue. Oh, and I want to say this to the person that may be watching. Uh, hurt from Colorado. I'm going to answer your question in a whole separate video. Um, I noticed that I'm already getting close to time. I don't want to make a part three. So I decided to take Hurt from Colorado's question. And I'm going to, I'm going to make a whole video about it and I'll try and get it out tomorrow for you because it's such a huge question and it's just such a good idea for a video. So I'm the video for tomorrow is going to be why do we feel, why are we not good enough to the narcissist? Feelings of not good enough. So hurt, stay tuned, okay? I'm going to answer your question but just in a separate video. So Blue, Blue doesn't tell me where they're from, please tell me where you're from, everyone. What would you do if your narcissistic spouse alienated your entire family from you? Four children, four grandchildren, even your sister and brother. And obviously their own side of the family too. Good. They can take their whole family too. They accomplished this by using our corrupt anti-family court system. I like that's It's sad but true. They call it family court. I like what you call it, anti-family court. Would you continue to email and text or disappear? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but I can't answer this for you. I, I, I'm not, I, I can't tell you what to do because what you do doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't, should matter to other people, but yeah, it does. And it should matter to you. What matters is whatever you do, that you feel okay about it. Okay. If continuing contact and texting and emailing makes you feel better, then keep doing it. If it hurts you, stop. Okay. It may sound simple, but us victims tend to not realize something's even hurting us sometimes. In other words, this will cause tons of anxiety. And you may feel relieving some of this anxiety helps by talking to them. And then, but it makes you feel worse. That you think it's helping you feel better, right? So we really have to, really have to evaluate how your emotions, your body, what is it doing? What is this causing? The best way to do this is with another person. Talk about all this with another person so you also feel better about it and then get all the information out in front of you so you have all the information there so you can make the best choices, okay? And if you can do that with a professional who's good at that, they'll help you because life's all about making mistakes. But sometimes we don't want to, we can't keep making the same mistakes and some mistakes are really bad. This, this could be really damaging to you. I, I can't imagine what that's like. I haven't been through 
uh, I have never had children, grandchildren, so I can't imagine what it's like to feel like you're losing them. Let me please just try to make you feel better by telling you that nothing is permanent. Nothing. Right? Until we all die. That's the only thing, right? So this is temporary. Everything is temporary. How this is now doesn't mean it's going to be like this forever. Take care of you now. Don't take care of you later. Don't take care of other people now. Take care of you now and understand how everything feels to you. Okay? And don't do things that are so bad. Take care of yourself now. Maybe go away for a little while. Just temporary. Build yourself up and start. Maybe you can communicate with them when you feel better. Maybe communication with them now hurts. But maybe communication with them later on your terms when you feel better might feel good. Okay? I don't know. I don't know how you feel. I don't know how this makes you feel. That's, that's for you to decide, and it's, for your, it's your decision on what to do. But I can, all I can do, and it's real simple, I can just ask you, how does it feel when you talk to them? You can say, it stresses me out. And I can say, well, I'd recommend not doing it. And if you say, well, the idea of not talking to them stresses me out too. Say, yeah, but talking to them stresses you out right now. So let's just not for a little while. And the goal is to talk to them again someday. How can we do that? Your terms. Your terms. You feel better, stronger, better boundaries, better communication. Learn what's going on. Learn about these people that are doing this to you. Learn why they're doing it to you instead of they're just bad people, right? And then you'll find out what you can do about it. Usually processing emotions will help you make decisions. And, and so many of us have troubles making decisions because so many of us ignore our emotions. We ignore how we feel, and then we don't know what to do. We also feel like we're insignificant, not good enough, bad people. And what we want isn't enough. What we should do is all that matters. What other people do is what we should do. No, you live your own life and you create your own path. I'm sorry. Good luck. Hire, hire a professional to help you. You really need you really need help. Anybody going through that needs help. Okay. Uh, and again, hurt from Colorado. I'll answer your question in a separate video. I hope to have that out tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you, all of you. You guys have been so great, so supportive. These videos are growing. Uh, I'm gaining more questions and more responses and, and, and more support. So thank you, all of you, for what you're doing. Little comments and likes, thumbs up, subscribing is really helping me. Thanks, guys. Always love yourself first, and I'll see you next week. Bye.